Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got excellent science to cover on solar cycles, solar forcing of economics, and the sun's control over the polar vortex. We've also got an update on the tropical cyclone near Australia, and of course, we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Another relatively calm day except for the large departing sunspot group. Massive plasma filaments have remained stable but are directly facing Earth today, so we're keeping close watch on their stability and on the X-ray flux for flares. The sunspot scenario is largely unchanged from yesterday. It's the Titanic group top right heading towards the far side of the sun. It has had a couple of M-class flares but nothing larger, which is fairly surprising given its size and complexity. You can see how it's the brightest area here in the extreme ultraviolet, 94 angstroms tinted blue. The other spots are less dangerous, and solar flaring could drop even more as we head into next week. Meanwhile, the filaments will take over the watch, kinda already have. Those thin dark ropes are pretty darn big, so far stabilizing each other to a large extent. We're watching them very closely today. Stay in your seat, big guys. Up next, it's officially a cyclone after the predicted intensification has occurred. It will soak the coastline, but luckily is not expected to make an imminent landfall. Won't be fun, but would be much worse if it dove straight south and into the coast itself. Up next, excellent paper on ResearchGate describing how the worst economic years are right after the extremes both high and low, so peak solar activity and sunspot minimum a one-year lag. That means they do expect this year and 2031 to be very bad economic years. Link in your list below the video in the description box. Along with this one, a group doing honest work but not coming up with much helpful information, using two new untested and definitely unproven methods of solar cycle forecasting, they came up with two wildly different ranges of a forecast. One suggests the weakest cycle in over a century and the other predicted one that makes our current cycle look small. This is like saying I predict the weather will be somewhere between a light breeze and a hurricane, but thanks anyway, guys. Lastly here, now that is science. Taking the many papers on solar forcing of wind, mid-atmospheric temperature, and the polar vortex, and they're not only confirming the connections, but quantify them as they watch the process unfold in real time. Solar proton storms can have a 20% boost to vortex speeds. When the sun is active, it strengthens the vortex, but when the sun is weak, the vortex weakens, expands, and we get those major winter events. Yep, confirmed. That's the sun. Folks, be sure to plan your trip out to Observer Ranch this year. Lots of major events and lots of smaller ones, too. I'll be out there Sunday afternoon when the quail class ends for a Q&A. Next weekend is the conference and chicken class, and after that... Grand opening weekend with Dr. Robitaille and then Kings of Catastrophe weekend with Dr. Dunning. There's my daughter and one of the ranch leaders welcoming the first round of chicks to the new Valley of the Sun. Go to ObserverRanch.com, see the event list, pick your lodging option, book your stay. Love to shake your hands, love to pray with you. Come see us. It starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 45 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone